Hi, and welcome to this overview of a FACETS model of arts education leadership. I'm Lynn Tuttle, the Director of Arts Education at the Arizona Department of Education, and I'll be a narr your narrator for this brief overview of this FACETS model of arts ed leadership. First, a quick overview. This is a FACETS model where we're looking at um, some of the pieces, the collection of pieces that go into making an arts education leader. This model draws from the National Arts Assessment Institute headed by Dr. Timothy Brophy, held in August this past year in Washington, DC. Dr. Brophy encouraged those of us attending the Institute to take a moment and reflect on our own strengths and weaknesses, a self-assessment, prior to attending the material the Institute had to offer. This self-reflection opportunity changed how I participated in the Institute, leading to one of the most compelling and fulfilling professional development opportunities I've experienced in my 20 years in the field. Alex Nelson at the Arts Commission and I thought the same approach may be useful for our one-day Arizona Arts Education Conference, and we hope you find it just as compelling a tool as I did earlier this year. So, find a piece of paper and a pencil, and get ready to take some notes on how you score yourself in these eight facets of arts education leadership. Then, think about which sessions you may want to attend at the conference to shore up places that are less strong for you or to dig deeper in areas where you feel you need to learn more. As Dr. Brophy would say, leadership is certainly multifaceted. There are many different dimensions and many different pieces that come into play to make us a quality arts education leader. There are discrete subsets of knowledge and skills, and we're going to show you the ones that Alex and I have put together for today's presentation. But they are also interdependent. They are not separate silos. They all interact together to make us a better and a stronger leader in arts education and in the specific disciplines that we represent within the field. So here's what the FACETS model looks like. There are eight separate pieces. We're going to start with that idea of creating and communicating a mission and vision. We're going to go around the um, circle clockwise, ending with closing the loop. I'm going to dig into each of these facet pieces for a little bit of time and give you a moment to self-reflect on where you feel you are as an arts education leader connected to that section of the model. So to help you do that, we have created this little score sheet, a little scorecard or pre-assessment sheet. You can find that on the web along with this presentation. And if you've printed it out, feel free to follow along and give yourself a score. How are you doing? What do you find yourself doing well? What needs a bit more help? The rating scale goes from one lowest to five highest at the top of the score. Use the guiding questions in italics to help you determine your score for each facet and you will receive a similar scorecard on the day of the conference. So you can check your scores at the end of the day, kind of a pre-assessment now, post-assessment on the day of the conference. Okay, let's dive on in. Facet one of arts education leadership, create and communicate a mission and vision. So as we look at this area, let's think about what that means. How do we create and communicate a mission and vision for arts education in our schools, in our community, our organization, or our workplace? Your mission is your purpose stated clearly, and your vision is your mission achieved with excellence. It's a little different way of thinking about mission and vision statements, but I love this idea that our vision is our mission once it is achieved with excellence. So what do you currently do in terms of mission and vision around arts education as an arts education leader? Do you have a mission state in your school or in your organization that includes arts education? Does your vision for arts education represent that mission statement achieved with excellence? Our mission and vision for arts education communicated clearly and part of the entirety of your school, community, or organization. For example, is arts education included in the mission statement of your school or of your school district? And is your mission and vision for arts education reflected in our current state policy? Where is it similar? Where might it be different? Perhaps yours is stronger than state policy. Okay, you've thought now about mission and vision and where you fall in terms of your pre-assessment if you're keeping score. Let's go on and look at facet two, commitment to and advocating for the value of arts education. As you know, arts education is considered a core academic subject, both at the state level in Arizona and at the federal level in the current version of the Elementary and Secondary Education Act. How do we value arts education in our community? 
How do we showcase that value? How do we help advocate for arts education within everything else that happens in the school day and in our community organization? So here are some questions to score yourself on commitment and advocacy. Do you value arts education within your school and organization community? Do your stakeholders value it? Do you, you believe personally that student learning in the arts strengthens their overall education? Do you understand current state arts education policies and practices and how those are reflected within your current school or community or organizational setting? And do you feel comfortable talking about the value of arts education and translating it to different audiences, different stakeholders or authorizers, such as your principal or the chair of the governing board of your arts organization? Are you committed? Do you feel comfortable? Do you participate as an advocate on behalf of your profession, on behalf of students in terms of arts education learning? Go ahead and give yourself a score. And now let's think about facet three. Building trust among constituencies by being aware of current educational trends, and as I like to say, finding an artistic place at the table. So looking at this area of building trust, and these were borrowed from Dr. Brothby's presentation back in August, right? These ideas of credibility or trustworthiness is based on your character as a leader and also on your competence. Are you leading based on your motives and your values? Do you lead with integrity? And are you competent in what you do? Are you confident? And do you have competence in your skills and abilities and a track record of your results? So thinking about that in terms of arts education, how do we build trust for arts education? First and foremost, we build trust based on what we've been talking about, your commitment and your value and belief system about arts education. Also, the degree to which you are view viewed as knowledgeable about arts education and how it connects to this larger environment of educational reform in which we are all currently placed. So how does arts education relate to the new Arizona College and Career Ready Standards? Where does arts education fit in terms of this conversation around teacher evaluation and student assessment? Where does arts education fit as we look at a new assessment system for our English and mathematics tests and assessments? Uh, being knowledgeable, understanding that larger environment, being able to connect arts education to that larger environment makes you a go-to person in the conversations that occur at education, educational tables. Are you conveying a consistent message that arts education is important for the improvement and teaching and learning throughout the educational landscape and how arts education connects back to our current reforms? You need to be clear and consistent about your message and your value proposition and how arts education supports the goals already laid out by your school, your community, your organization. So now let's score yourself on this idea of building trust and working with a variety of stakeholders. Are you viewed as knowledgeable about arts education by your peers, by your principal, by the leader of your nonprofit organization? And are you able to convey a message with enthusiasm and excitement about the importance of arts education, how it is aligned to the overall goals of improvement for your organization or your school? Do you currently have a seat at that table? What might you need to do to get yourself there? So think about that and score yourself on building trust. Facet 4. Know the data on how the arts are taught and how your program compares to others across the state. One of the pieces we'll be doing at this conference is giving you brand new data on how highly qualified teachers are available for students in our public schools. This is new data on how arts education is taught. Do you know it? And how does that data provide a grounding for your own arts education program, whether that's based in a school or in the community? In the community, how are you partnering with what's going on in the schools and in the schools? How does your program compare? How do you utilize arts education data to support your own program? And how do you use that data set to help you build a stronger, higher quality program over time? So when we're using data, arts education leaders must understand where it comes from and what it means, be able to share that data meaningfully with their stakeholders, and within your own environment, know how to use creative to provide evidence of the wonderful quality of the program you're providing for children in the arts and that you're also open to utilizing data to create a better program that that data set might help you figure out something to do differently and perhaps do better 
So now score yourself on knowing the data. How do you use arts education data? How do you think about it in terms of your programs? Do you know where to find it? Where to access it? How it was created? Where it came from? Do you look for opportunities to create data about your own program to share with others? And are you open to critique and programmatic changes based on what your own data set tells you? Some of those are tough to take, but as artists, we're good with critique, and the data helps us in that arena as arts educators. All right, moving on to facet five. Leveraging existing resources to create a rich arts learning environment, including discrete arts learning and arts integration. So as we think about this area, we often face the facts that resources are quite limited and to some extent limit what can be done in terms of arts education. But with that said, you can always leverage the resources to maximize the, pot the potential for arts education programming in your school, organization, or community. So what can be done with minimal resources? How are the arts taught in your community? This gets back to the data question again, right? Do you know? Where can you find that information? And you begin it with a survey to build, uh, to build upon. And remember that the data set that we're going to give you at the conference is just about teachers available in school buildings. There are a wide variety of other partners who may be available in your community to support arts learning. Go out and find out more. Where might arts integration and arts education offerings be happening? As I just said, it's not always within the school building. Whom do you know and who do you need to know who might be involved in this work? And then how can these opportunities be leveraged to support students in their academic and artistic growth? There are a couple of resources I want to share with you in this section about resources. One of them is a document called the Shared Endeavor Statement. Created by nine national arts education organizations and released earlier this year, this document highlights what quality arts education can and should be and speaks to the roles we all can play in supporting quality arts education. You can find this resource at www.seadae.org. An additional resource, resource to consider um, as you think about what's out there to leverage and to support your program is a wonderful tool developed by the Kennedy Center Alliance for Arts Education Network called the Kennedy Center Audit Tool. The audit is a series of questions you can ask stakeholders in your community to determine the current level of arts education programming available, as well as places to grow your program and ways to grow commitment to arts education in your community and schools. Several Arizona communities have successfully used the audit over the last two decades to help them plan and prepare for better arts education. You can find the audit tool at the Kennedy Center website that's listed above. So now here's your opportunity to score yourself on leveraging resources. Do you currently use existing resources and data to determine what's available? Are you inclusive in that search, looking at arts education opportunities that include arts integration um, across constituencies, looking at varieties of places where the arts may be offered in your community and by your students, parents, community, teachers? Have you conferred with colleagues in the broader community who may be involved in supporting arts education? Have you really looked at and mined all of the resources that might be present for you to work with? All right, we're getting there. Facet six. Know and teach the concepts and terminology of arts education as captured in state and national standards. So to be considered a leader, you need to be knowledgeable in your field. You must be conversant with the terms, skills, and concepts of your art form and of your discipline. Um, these are outlined, as you know, in the new National Core Art Standards as well as in our current Arizona Art Standards. Here's an overview of the new National Voluntary Arts Standards. You can find them at www.nationalartstandards.org. In addition, at our conference, we will be releasing drafts of brand new Arizona Art Standards. And these are drafts for you to give us feedback on. These drafts will be organized in five discrete disciplines, dance, music, media arts for the first time, theater, and visual arts. They will be organized using artistic processes, creating, performing, responding, and connecting, which are very similar to our current three strands of create, relate, and evaluate. What's very different in terms of organizations, these will be organized grade by grade level, plus three levels at the high school. That's different than our current standards that are set up as beginning, intermediate, advanced, and honors or distinction progression. So uh, slightly more differentiation, trying to look at a grade by grade set of standards. 
As I began this slide with, we need your input. Please participate in making these quality art standards for our state. We look forward to that input during the conference and afterwards. All right, so think about yourself in terms of knowledge and concepts and terms. Do you actively engage with art standards in your current instructional planning, practicing, and programming? Are you able to discuss art standards in a meaningful way with your students, parents, principals, authorizers, and other administrators? Facet 7, Relating Arts Assessment of Student Learning to Teacher Effectiveness. How do you approach student assessment in the arts? Are you assessing students in terms of what they're learning in the arts? How do you capture that and share that with others? What do you see as constituting one year of student growth in the arts or one and one half years growth? And how do you measure this in a way that is considered valid, reliable, and fair? Fair for your students and valid and reliable based on the expectations set by your principal, your district, your organization. And on what basis can and should we assign the descriptors of effective or highly effective to arts educators in our state? These are all the questions that we're wrestling with at the state level, and I know that you are engaged in the same dialogue and conversation and journey at the local level in your school and community. So let's score yourself on relating student learning to teacher evaluation. Here's a guiding question. Can you comfortably and knowledgeably describe how you are assessing learning in the arts in your classroom or program and how that relates to how you are evaluated as a teacher or a designer or director of arts education? So can you describe what's going on in the classroom with your students? Have you measured that using assessment tools and practices? And can you connect that back to how you are viewed as a teacher leader? And finally, facet eight, closing the loop. Back to the top of the model. Arts education needs strong leaders who remained informed and knowledgeable. And we close the loop by always analyzing our results and making improvements along the way, right? Making certain that we are using those results to improve student-centered teaching and learning. So score yourself on closing the loop. Do you close that loop as an arts education leader in Arizona and in your own community? Are you good at taking the data and knowledge that you've gained and re-energizing, rejuvenating, rebuilding, and redesigning your programs as you need over time? Are you continuously striving to do a better job as an arts education leader? Thanks again for spending some time with us looking at this facets model of arts education, leader, of arts education leadership. Now it's time to use your scorecard, give yourself a score, Figure out where you may have places of weakness, places of strength, and use that, utilize that, uh, that information as you approach getting ready for the conference. Examine those scores, review the conference program, determine what session choices you may want to go to. Perhaps you feel really confident and strong in your use of the current state standards and you're feeling that you've got time to look at the draft standards after the conference. Maybe you want to spend more time looking at assessment or looking at data issues. So consider where you want to go and plan your conference day accordingly. And come back and see how much you've accomplished at the end of the day. Pull out your scores, see where you have gained in terms of knowledge as an arts education leader, and celebrate that as you finish your conference journey with us at the end of the day on Monday, October 20th. We look forward to seeing you at the Phoenix Art Museum on Monday. Thanks again for joining us for this presentation.